All right, hello everyone, and welcome to our first online lecture for Rapid Learner. Uh, you might have had myself, uh, Ms. Thatcher, or Mr. Heisel. Uh, so if you haven't had me yet, uh, welcome. And again, my name is Ms. Thatcher, and um, I'm excited to jump into Chapter 14, guys. Okay, so first of all, um, Chapter 12 also dealt with vectors, and so I put some reminders here about Chapter 12, and then I put um, the new information for Chapter 14 next to it. Because what you're going to see is that just extending this from a two space to three space is actually pretty easy. There's only a few things that don't extend directly, and I'll talk about that. Okay, so uh, for example, like the way that we write a vector in two space, meaning that like the change in the x and the change um, in the x, like if I want to talk about two equivalent vectors, for example, um, then the change in x's have to be the same and the change in y's have to be the same. If I extend that to 3D, same thing is true, except now we have a change in x, a change in y, and a change in z. If we want to talk about um, a vector between two points, so here are my two points, then the magnitude or the lambda is just, you know, the Pythagorean relationship. In three space, notice now my points have three components or three parts to them, and my lambda would now then be dictated by three different pieces, three different components. Um, none of this changed. We did 2D and 3D with lines and things like that, and we did the same thing as far as distance. So that should be a direct relationship there. I also added the directional cosines. So the directional cosines in two space were the change in x over lambda and change in y over lambda. Same thing here. Just notice we have a change in z over lambda for our C3. So again, that's very straightforward. Um, we have i and j, which are our basis vectors. Remember these are our basis vectors um, and they are one movement in the x direction and then one movement in the y direction. Same thing here. We just now have k. That's the new little piece which is a movement in the z direction, the positive z direction. Okay, we have a couple other things that are straight relationships. So straight extensions. So in chapter 12, um, if we just wrote vector A, typically that was the vector from the origin out to point A, and same thing for B. If I wanted to add them together, um, the way that I could find out what that new C value is is just by adding the X stuff together from A and B and adding the Y stuff together. We've talked about this. That's just simple addition. Um, in three space, it's the same thing. It's just now you have a Z component as well. Okay, um, writing lines in two space was pretty easy. If you remember, uh, this was what we just tested on. You would first go out from the origin to a particular point. So here I'll just do a quick sketch to remind you. So we would go out to the line and then we would move in the direction of the line. And then depending on how long we moved, which was our parameter, we would get various points on the line. And we could also split this up and write it um, in like kind of this basis vector form. Um, which has all of the I stuff together and then all of the J stuff together. We can extend that into three space, same idea. The way that we write a line is no different, guys. It's just my little drawing would be slightly different because now I would have a three space model and then I would have two points out here in space and I would want the line between them so I'd still go out to the point, that first point, and then I would still move along in space from there. So then I just happen to have this line that's like hovering above in three space. So it's the same exact relationship, except of course now you have this Z component, uh, which is in this case attached to your K. So we can look at a few of those later as we come, but it's a direct relationship from chapter 12. Okay, so the one thing that we can't just extend from two space is this idea of getting a plane, um, an equation of a plane that contains three non-collinear points. That part's important. Um, we already learned one method for doing this, Diophantine equations. I'm sure you loved doing that. Remember, that's when we, um, we wrote all of our equations and we solved for D and then we plugged that D value back in and, um, and got the equation for a plane. And it was pretty tedious. So we're going to look at a different way of doing that. Okay, so going back a little bit, if we have a one-dimensional construct, which if you're moving in one dimension, that's a line, 
Um, if we have that in two space and it involves one parameter because we're just moving in one direction, then it might make sense that if we have a two-dimensional construct, which is a plane in three space, that perhaps I would need to move in two parameters. So for example, if we consider two lines that intersect, um, if we know those two lines intersect, they have to form a single plane. So I kind of drew a picture here of two lines intersecting. So if those lines intersect, they have to intersect to form a plane. Um, then we have a way to kind of think of how we could make a plane. I'm going to do that on the next slide. We're going to do this using vectors. We can do it parametrically and then we'll eventually take it rectangularly. So pretty good stuff. Okay, so if we're given three points, so we've got our point one, point two, and point three, we could write equations for the two lines. We could write one line that goes through P1 and P2, and one line that goes through P1 and P3. Okay, so let me kind of get that started visually here. So let's say we've got our three points. That's my three space. So we've got our three points. I'll call this guy P1, P2, and we'll put P3 down here. Okay, so we could make one line that goes from P1 to P2, check, and we have one line that would go from P1 to P3, and since both of these lines contain P1, but they're not collinear, then these lines would have to create a plane. So I'll kind of draw that plane here in orange. So we know that those two lines create that single plane. We also know that linear combinations of these two vectors, if we put them in basis form, can be used to span a plane, uh, meaning getting every point. Like, do you guys remember when we talked about this in class where, like, if I made this only half as long and then I added it with this vector, I would maybe end up here. Or if I added this guy that's half as long with that guy, I would end up here. Basically meaning if I add various lengths of these two vectors, I'm going to get various points along that plane. So if we can write a vector equation that involves these um, and use linear combinations to add these together, then we could get every point that's in our plane. So let's take a look at what that would look like. Okay, so in the previous slide, I had this picture here of our plane using those three points. Our vector equation for this plane would be as such. Okay, so if you remember when we did vector equations of a line, we'd have to first get out to the line and then we'd move in one direction. Well, because it's a plane and we're moving in two directions, I'm going to head out to the plane first and then I'm going to move in two directions from there. So let me kind of show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to head out to the plane to one of the points and it doesn't matter which one. In mine, I did P1, so I'm going to do that. And then from there, I'm going to add to that the two vectors that move. So, so I'm going to say I can go out to P1 and then I'm going to move from P1 towards P2 while also being able to move towards P3. And so from the, pre, from the previous unit, you should remember if I am allowed to move in in pieces, you know, I can get to these various points. So that's what I'll do. So then I'll start moving in those two dimensions when I get out, once I get out there and then I'll create that plane. Okay, so let's see what this looks like as this equation. So I've got, it is a vector of an equation of a plane, but remember that I'm really, this vector is really points that are various points in the plane. So, okay, so I've got my vector and I'm going to start at P1. And so my P1 is technically the vector that's just P, which is my x sub 1, y sub 1, z sub 1. And then I'm going to add my vector that allows me to move in this dimension, this one direction. So that's my vector from P1 to P2. So technically that would be my change in x between those, and my change in y, and my change in z times t. That t is going to allow me to move as much as I want or as little as I want or backwards in that direction. And then I'm going to do the same thing in this direction, which will then again flatten me out to that plane. So then that's going to be going from uh, the P3. So you'll notice I'm using my sub 3s on this one. And I'm going to use a different parameter because obviously these two things don't have to move at the same length. Like I don't have to go half this length and half that. I can go as, as long as I want in each direction.
Okay, so if we've done this, this is our vector equation for a plane, which looks a little weird, I know, it kind of looks like it's a line, but it's not. How do I know that it's not? Because it's moving in two directions. It's starting at a point, and then it's spanning out in that direction and that direction, which actually allows it to move in over an area. So this is moving in two directions or two dimensions, creating a plane. Okay, so if I wanted to put this into parametric equations, all I need to do is just sort my elements. So I can split that into just the x movement. So I'm going to start with my initial point, x sub 1, which is my p, and I'm going to add. Now technically, you're really just adding the change in x coming from 2 times that parameter plus the change in x, but this time coming from 3. So I'm kind of shorthanding it here to show you that. Um, this is the change in x, and that's the change in that x. Um, for the y, same thing. Just coming from the second one, and then coming from the third one. When I say second and third, I mean like I'm coming f going from p1 to p2 and p1 to p3. So that's why you see the sub2s and sub3s. Um, you could denote those in other ways. That's just how I'm choosing to do it for this video. And then um, I'm going to add that third dimension in here. Okay, so this is our parametric version for various points in the plane. Remember, this gives me various points in the plane that I want, which is what an equation for a construct does anyway. Okay, um, but wait, there's more. Um, if we want the rectangular equation for the plane, remember rectangular equation being ax plus by plus cz equals d, Think about how we got the rectangular equation for a line when we had parametrics. If you remember, we just used linear combi combinations to eliminate our parameter. Um, so we're going to do the same thing here, and we're going to be able to eliminate ourselves down to this rectangular equation. So let's do an example. I'll start on the next page. So the first thing that we're going to need is some points um, to, that are non-collinear. So let's make up some points. We'll do A is 2, negative 1, uh, 3. We'll make B. Uh, 4, 1, 1, and we'll make C um, negative 3, negative 4, 0. Okay. All right. So the first thing that we need to do is start with a vector equation of the plane. So we're going to start with that. So let's make a vector equation of our plane. We'll call it R. So I need to go out to my first point. So actually, it might help some of you guys if I do just a quick sketch of what this might look like. And I might not have picked the best points, but let's see. Okay, so I'd be at 2, negative 1, 3. So maybe somewhere here would be A. I'd be at 4, 1, 1. So maybe something like this for B. And C is going to be the tricky one. I'm at negative 3 negative 4, 0. So I'm like flat back in the plane over here, and that's C. Okay, so I'm basically going to go out to the origin, out from the origin to point A. That's going to be my first move. And then from there, guys, I'm going to, once I'm here, that's A is in the plane, then I'm going to move from A to C, and I'm going to move from A to B, and then that is the plane that I'm creating. So I'm not sure if that helps, but okay, let me get rid of some of these straight outs. All right, so let's write it. So the first thing I need to do is get out to the plane. And I get out to the plane by going from the origin out, which would just be the vector 2, negative 1, 3. That couldn't be easier. That's the origin out to the plane. Okay, now I'm going to move in the direction from A to my various points. So the first one I'm going to do is from A to B. And so I have to find the vector. So from A to B would be 2. I'm just doing the difference here, 2, 2, negative 2. And I'm allowed to go various lengths in that direction to create my plane. And then I'm going to add my second vector, which goes from A to C. And so A to C would be 2 to negative 3 is negative 5, negative 1 to negative 4 is negative 3, and 3 to 0 is negative 3. Okay. And of course, we would always want to make sure that these are non-collinear. Um, I made it that way, but they are non-collinear points. Okay, so here's our vector equation for a line. Beautiful. Now let's change that into parametrics. 
So we're just going to isolate each of the elements. So I'm going to have all my x's. So I have 2 plus 2t minus 5. Oops, we forgot our par parameter over here, didn't we? S. Make sure you sneak that at parameter back in. For my y's, I have negative 1 plus 2t minus 3s. And for my z values, I start at 3, I subtract 2t, and I subtract 3s. So this actually won't be bad. Um, it just so happened I made these up, but they came out nice. You know how that happens, guys. Um, all right, so now I'm just going to eliminate the parameters. My two parameters are t and s. So I want to eliminate t and s. That's my goal. So I notice that because I have 2t and negative 2t, this is going to be easy. It won't always be that easy, guys. So I'm going to put together these two first, and then I will put together the x and the z as well. Um, okay, so let's see. Actually, I'll start with the x and the z. So I'm going to add these two equations together. So I want to make sure that you guys see that. So I'll go a little bit more in detail. So I'm going to add the x equals 2 plus 2t minus 5s with the z equals 3 minus 2t minus 3s, because you see how these are going to cancel. So over here, I get x plus z. Over here, I get 5 minus 8s. Okay, so I've eliminated the t. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the y and z. So I've got the y equals negative 1 plus 2t minus 3s, and then the z equals 3 minus 2t minus 3s. I'm going to add those. So I have y plus z equals 2 minus 6s. Okay, so now we just need to eliminate the s. So you can see this is going to be a little more complicated. Let's see, 8 and 6 both go into 24, so I'm going to use 24. So I'm going to multiply this guy by a 3 and this guy by a negative 4 to kind of make these nicer. Get rid of some of these. Okay, so if I multiply this guy by a 3, this new equation will be make sure everybody gets multiplied by a 3. And here, everybody gets multiplied by a negative 4. Be careful. Take your time on these. One little hiccup can throw everything else off. Okay. So, now we've got, let's see, 3x minus 4y minus z equals 7. Guys, look what just happened. We just eliminated all of our parameters, and we have our rectangular equation for a plane. What? That's huge. This was way easier than those Diophantine equations. So, so you can see how this is going to be great. If you wanted to check to make sure that this was, in fact, correct, of course, you could plug a point back in. Like, I'll just pick a point. I'll pick B. So if I plug in 4 for x and 1 for y and 1, oops, sorry, and 1 for z, we should get 7. Let's see. 12 minus 4 minus 1 is in fact 7. So that point works. You could check all three if you wanted to. You could do that with a calculator pretty quickly. Um, but either way, there we go. So we have our vector equation for a plane, our, rec our uh, parametric equations for a plane, and then our rectangular equations for a plane. Okay, um, so you guys are going to be practicing this. You're going to be doing a lot of stuff. You're going to be basically um, just writing vectors in general. Like if I just gave you two points in 3D, uh, you're going to be writing vector equations. You're going to be moving along those lines. You're going to be adding and subtracting those vectors. You're going to be scalar multiplying by those vectors. All of that stuff, just quickly let me go back. All of that that you're going to be doing at the beginning of the chapter are these straight relationships, which should be really easy for you to convert from 2D to 3D. That's why we do chapter 12 and then chapter 14, writing equation of a line. That should also be pretty easy. Um, so you're going to get to some harder stuff, of course, we always do, and we'll have some sessions so you can uh, ask questions. And um, you might want to watch this video a couple of times. You can pause it. You can go back and forth and kind of get a feel for um, how I did this. 
uh, as many times as you need to. Uh, so good luck and check out the assignment sheet that's online and you can start working through some of those problem sets. And um, I will talk to you guys soon. Take care. Stay healthy.